Hello, and welcome to this Visionaire 5 tutorial series. If you haven't seen one of my videos before, my name is James, and I'm a hobbyist game developer. In this series, each video will cover how to perform a particular task inside a Visionaire Studio. The first part of each video will cover a quick and dirty overview of the task, and then, for the more patient among us, a step-by-step -step example. In today's video, we will cover how to set up a new project. With that in mind, let's get started. Before we start Visionaire and create our project, it's best to create a folder for that project. Here's the overview of our project folders. If you're comfortable with this folder structure and you know how to create it, then pause this video, create your project folders, and move on to the next video in this series. However, if you're interested in the details, keep watching. So, why do we need these folders? Why can't we just start Visionaire and start making a game? Well, the problem with that is that Visionaire references game assets relative to the project file. What does that mean? It means that Visionaire will not import any files below the level of your project folder. So if you have an image that you want to use as a game asset for something like a scene or a character, you must copy that image file to either the same folder that your project is in or a subfolder. If you don't do this, Visionaire will complain. Now, this isn't a bad thing. It forces you to be organized. And let's face it, the better organized you are, the easier it is to finish your project. So, let's take a deeper look. Most of the folders are self-explanatory. For instance, the characters and the scene folders store the images for each of your characters and scenes. Docs is for your game design documents. We'll touch on those in another video. Interfaces may be the only one that needs a little explanation. And this folder is for your GUI or graphic user interface images. For instance, images for your inventory, item icons, mouse cursors, and fonts. All would be stored here. As an example, here is the folder structure for the game I will be using for most of these tutorials. Notice how the subfolders group characters and scenes. This game will have two characters, one that is a chef and the other a customer, and two scenes, one inside the shop and the other outside in the eatery. Now, many of these subfolders we can create as we go along. So, all you need to create is the first level of folders. Future tutorials will take care of the rest. So, as you can see, it's fairly easy to start a new project. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, and you're not already doing so, check out the playlist for this series. And if you find this content useful, consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Again, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next.